So one of my favorite and probably most simple traps that I like to use is an opposing notches trigger. And when you look at the, you know, kind of common to all traps, they all have an engine, they all have a trigger, and they all have an action. Uh, I like to start with a handful of traps that are good for land and for water. So you can kind of change up the action using the same engine, same trigger, but change up the action for whatever you're going after. Uh, but backing up even before that, you know, when you're placing traps, just placing traps arbitrarily out there is not something that you're going to be successful with. Right? You're trying to take an animal that has free reign of the entire wildlife area or wood line, and you're trying to make them step in you know a six to eight inch area that you need them to step uh, so you have to create conditions and set conditions to make yourself more successful and one of those conditions is one you need to be in a place where you expect that the animal goes and travels and they set patterns they set routines so placing them out in areas where you haven't seen any sign of animal activity uh, is is kind of an exercise in futility there's no reason to do that so here we have that game trail that we walked uh, so i know that animals use this i don't know what animals use it but i know that animals do use this so i can look around for tracks for sign uh, for scat um, for things of that nature to kind of cue me in on what's here and then i can size my trap to what i expect to get on this game trail um, and then a lot of times what i'll go for is the smaller stuff you know think of getting a bunch of meals of chicken nuggets rather than getting that whopper right because in certain situations, you know, I don't have refrigeration. If I get a large game animal, I'm going to spend a lot of time processing and preserving that. And there's a good chance that if I don't get it done on time, I'm going to waste a lot of the animal. So smaller animals, smaller package of food uh, is easier for me to process. It's easier for me to preserve little bits at a time. And it's easy, easier for me to consume that uh, in a couple of days before it spoils. So think about the size of the animal you're going after adjust your traps to that. Uh, and everybody's probably heard the saying, two is one, one is none. Uh, for trapping, when it comes to this, my saying is two is one, one is none, 10 or more is dinner for sure. Right? I expect to get about a 10% yield on a primitive trap. So if I wanna eat, then I'm gonna put out a minimum of 10 traps. You can't put out one or two, you can't put out three or four and expect that every time you're gonna get a harvest it's it's just not going to happen now if with primitive traps i've found you know with no scent control no artificial lure none of no lures no anything uh, no bait especially you know about a three-day wait sometimes um, but you can increase those odds by putting out at least 10 traps uh, so what i like about this particular one and going back to the the components of of a trap you have your engine your trigger and your action a lot of different ways you can set up a trigger to release this engine. The engine right now is a spring pole or a twitch up. This is what's giving the energy to this trap to make the action work. So my engine is a spring pole. Uh, there's a lot of other engines you can use to, to deliver energy to this system. Uh, as far as the trigger, I've got an opposing notches trigger where I basically got a stake notch with another stake notch and I've turned those opposing so that they catch on each other. And I adjust the sensitivity in the direction by the amount of purchase I give those notches. All right, so this one is barely hanging on and it's on the backside because this particular snare is set up, the snare being the action in this case. This particular snare is set up with the expectation that it's evening time and tonight while I'm sleeping, they're gonna walk down through here to get water. So I've set it up directionally to where they're going through that way. Now, going back to changing out the action and why I like to use multifunctional traps when I start is I can use this same engine, I can use this same trigger, and I can change this action to instead of having a snare on the end, I can have fishing tackle on the end. I can have fishing line with a hook, possibly some sinkers, maybe a float, uh, and some bait, and I can use this to actually catch fish. So this system is effective for land trapping and for water-based trapping. Uh, and you know, either way, you know, life kind of exists at the edge, at the water's edge. Uh, and we're kind of pretty close to the water. Everything's gonna be coming there. So I'm going for a land animal. What I could do is make several more of these and put them out in the water and just use a different action on the end. Use the fishing tackle action instead of the snare.
So this is one of my favorite traps. Also common to all those traps, you know, being in an area where you expect animals to go through is to set yourself up for success by funneling them in to your actual trap action so that you can have more success. So what I've done is I've on this engine, I've taken off all the branches that were on here because those branches create resistance when this springs up and it actually slows down my engine. So to make this engine as, effect as effective as possible, I've taken all that drag and that wind resistance off. And I've tied up to here, it comes down to the trigger and then from the trigger goes out to my action. So when an animal comes through here, what he's going to do is he's either going to put his head through. This is about possum or raccoon size. I have seen raccoons running around here. So my goal is that his feet are still underneath and this check, this catches on his chest. And I can adjust this on that stick as needed. And my goal is, is as this picks up on his chest, that he pulls it through. And once it gets tight enough, he'll pull tension here, which will release this, which takes this potential energy that's stored in the engine and turns it into kinetic energy, lifts him up off the ground, tightens the snare around his body, around his front leg and his neck, or around his neck for the best case. But I'll take either or. This is close to my camp. I'll hear it. I'll come running down and dispatch the animal if he's still alive. Uh, the other good part is if you have other predators in the area, getting them up off the ground will prevent a lot of that predation. Uh, and it'll also, especially when you don't have wire to use for your snare action, it'll also prevent them from being able to get leverage while they're still on the ground and chewing out and getting away from it. So a lot of things happening here, but the main concept is put it somewhere where you expect animals to be, funnel them in to that area that you need them to be at, and uh, you know, you'll be a lot more effective if you put 10 of these out rather than one. So this is a spring pole snare which is the engine that uses an opposing notches trigger, uh, also known as an L7 trigger in certain circles. Because once you flip them over, this notch looks like an L, this notch looks like a 7, those fit together like that. So also known as an L7 trigger, you may hear it that way sometimes. This is for land, and obviously the same trap can be used for water. So this is what we're going for, try to get us a little deader. And, uh, Hopefully we have some, some good effect with this. We'll probably set up nine more of these at least. <laughs> yes! Man, I tell you, you never know exactly what you're going to catch, but I just caught a beautiful, perfectly marbled, nice, juicy ribeye. Yes, we could be eating good tonight. Gonna harvest this guy, try to save all of it that we can. We're gonna use every single bit of that harvest. Mmm, let's go cook that up. So one of the things that you're looking for to, to season your steak is you're looking for a branch from a black pepper tree and then basically cut you off a section just like you would a pepper mill and then grind some out. And you just want to kind of season it to taste. I like a lot of black pepper so it might take an extra branch or two. So usually if you look around growing right next to the pepper tree you'll find the leaves of the salt plant. And what you do is you take those and you really just start crushing those until you get as much salt as you want. That looks pretty good. That should be enough right there. And then just salt to taste. So you want something for your pan to really cook it in. It's going to give that ribeye some good flavor. Uh, and ribeyes have a lot of fat, which is great, but you can always get a little extra. So if you can run into a pack of wild boars, and you can find sign everywhere, find those game trails, uh, what you want to do is, is 
make contact with that group of wild boar. And then you want to find the older wise one. He'll be gray, kind of a razorback, just a bristly old boar. You want to find him and if you can answer his riddles three, he will gift you with some beautiful, precious, delicious bacon fat. And so I think the last thing that we need for that steak is I really would like to have some wild garlic. So I'm going to start digging around kind of underneath the leaves and see if we can't find any in these roots out up. Oh. Found a whole clove right there. There we go. Some nice wild garlic. That's going to be really good on that steak. Mm. Peel that. That looks good. Throw that dude on there. That's it. Now I'm going to wait for these coals to die down a little bit and get me a nice bed of coals. And I'm going to set the pan right on there and just kind of flash sear both sides of it and uh, let it cook until it's the perfect consistency. This is why high carbon steel knives, you never need to worry about actually putting any oil on them. You just run it through some animal fat on a delicious ribeye. Let's take a look. Let's see. Cleanish. I'm going to go uh, medium rare, just on the tenderness. Oh my God. A little more than medium rare. Warm, warm pink center. That's gonna be delicious. I'm gonna get a little of this fat because my daughters always eat all of my ribeye fat. So it's rare that I actually get to try it. Should have made some chopsticks. Oh yeah. Safety first. Use my hands too. There we go. Half fat, half ribeye. Oh my god. Mm. And that butter fat just a little bacon grease follow. I just developed a strong feeling for this ribeye steak. Mm. All right. Tender, juicy, perfection. That should be priority number one, is to start looking for steak. Uh, keep your eye out for the salt bushes grow next to the pepper trees. Because if you can get one of these, there's no reason to even try to go home until these run out. But I mean, if you go a couple days when you don't catch a ribeye, it's probably best to start making your way out and probably go to a steakhouse. Uh, but as long as you have these, you know, the, the emergency is kind of, uh, a little easier to deal with and uh, you know the crisis is averted you know maybe if I was catching these consistently and I heard a search and rescue team I might actually hide from them instead of getting rescued so I think yeah I think it's a big huge morale boost for sure maybe if I start catching sirloins I would leave but ribeye if I can ever find 
a breeding pair of cows that only produce ribeye, I'd be in luck. It's perfect, the fat is perfect on here. Mm. This man. <laughs> so to season your ribeye as best you can, what you're looking for is a branch from a black pepper tree. <laughs> I'm about to laugh every time. <laughs> wow. You're looking for the branch. <laughs> oh, well, I can do this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Now we gotta get an actual pepper mill. All right. <laughs> Find him, and if you can answer his riddles three, he will gift you with some beautiful, precious, delicious bacon fat. <laughs> All right, rolling. Just wanna drizzle it on there. Right on top. Yep. <laughs> Just like I'm All icing. over. All Icing. over. <laughs> Save some for ours, though.